you guys, this is Mr. Millings, and today we're going to learn about density. So what is density? Well, it says right here that density is a comparison between an object's mass and how much space it will take up, or its volume. So density is a relationship between two things, uh, an object's mass and its volume. And to get the density of an object, it's quite simple. We take the mass of the object, and we divide it by the volume of that object. So let's suppose we have two objects. We have a ping pong ball in this beaker of water here, and we have a golf ball in this beaker of water here right and if we take a look the ping pong ball is floating in this water here and the ping pong ball sinks in this water here well why why does that happen well in order to figure this question out uh, we have to take a look at each substance's density all right so let's take a look at that if we take a look here at the ping pong ball the mass of a ping pong ball is about 2.7 grams and its volume or the amount of space it takes up is about 33.5 cubic centimeters. Okay, So if we do the math here, if we take the mass, which is 2.7 over 33.5, because the numerator is going to be less than the denominator, we're going to have a value that is less than 1. Okay, If we take a look at the golf ball over here, right, its mass has a, uh, is 46 grams. It has a mass of 46 grams, and its volume is about 40 cubic centimeters. Okay, So the golf ball is just a little bit big, bigger than the ping pong ball, but much heavier. And if we take a look at the golf ball here, in order to figure out its density, we must take its mass divided by its volume. So if we take the mass over volume here, right? if we're going to have a numerator bigger than the denominator, then we're going to have a final answer that is greater than 1. And anytime you have a density that is greater than one, it will it will sink in water. All right, and that is because the density of water is one gram per milliliter. This means that for every one milliliter of water, it's going to have a mass of one gram, or every one gram of water will take up one milliliter of space. Now, what you need to know is that when we're measuring the volume of things, milliliters and liters is typically used for liquids and gases, whereas cubic centimeters or cubic meters is typically used for solids. And that's because one milliliter is the same thing as one cubic centimeter. So if you have 100 milliliters of water, this is the same thing as uh, a 100 cubic centimeters of water. They're interchangeable. We just use milliliters for liquids and gases, and we use cubic centimeters for solids. So the density of water is one gram per milliliter or one gram per cubic centimeter. And then if the density of an object is greater than the density of water or greater than 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter, it's going to sink. So if we take a look at the golf ball here, it has nothing to do with the mass of this golf ball as to why it sinks. It has everything to do with the density. The density of this golf ball is greater than the density of water and therefore will sink. And if we take a look over here, this ping pong ball right here is going to float because it has a density that is less than the density of water. The density of water is 1.0 grams per milliliter or cubic centimeter. And if we take a look, this ping pong ball is going to have a density less than 1. Anytime the density of an object is less than 1, it will float in water, okay? So that is, uh, that is how density works. Density is a measure or a comparison uh, between an object's mass and an object's volume. So now let's take a look at a few examples and learn how we can determine or calculate the densities of several different objects. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to calculate the density of an object using water displacement. Okay, so let's suppose I have this little ball here, and this ball is some sort of metal material or metal substance, and we want to figure out what the metal is, okay? Well, if we want to figure out what the metal is, we will probably have to figure out what the density of this metal ball is, and then compare it to a chart of densities. Once we get this, uh, the density of this metal here, we can simply look at this chart and determine what metal it's going to be. So how do I figure out the density of this ball here? Well, in order to figure out the density, we're going to have to know two things. We're going to have to know its mass and its volume. So I put this little ball on a scale, and bam, its mass is 50.862 grams. So the mass is 50.862. 862 grams and now I'm gonna to have to figure out the volume but how do I figure out the volume how do I figure out how much space this takes up well what I can do is I can take a graduated cylinder I can then fill it to an arbitrary level meaning it doesn't really matter how full you fill this up maybe about halfway 
And then what we can do is we can then put the ball in here, calculate how much the water level has risen, and then figure out the volume of this ball using water displacement. All right, so let's suppose that the initial volume of this water that we arbitrarily filled up uh, reaches 10.2 milliliters okay so we filled up some water here and if you take a look and if we read from the bottom of the meniscus uh, when we pour water into a graduated cylinder it's going to have a tendency to bow like this that little bow is called a meniscus and whenever we take a measurement in a graduated cylinder we're always going to want to read from the bottom of the meniscus so the initial volume of this water here is 10.2 milliliters, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this ball in here and the water level is gonna rise. This water level here is gonna rise up. And uh, what we now need to do is figure out the new water level. Okay, we need to figure out uh, how much this water level has risen. So we have to figure out the, the final volume of the water that is in this, this, uh, this graduated cylinder. So if we take a look very closely and if we read from the bottom of the meniscus, we can see that the final volume is approximately 16.7 milliliters. All right, so we put the ball in and it's the water level has risen. So how do we figure out the volume of this ball now? Well, in order to figure out the volume of this ball, we have to take the final volume minus the initial volume. And if we do that, we'll get 16.7 minus 10.2. And we should end up with a volume of 6.5. Okay. So, we now know the mass of this ball. It's this right here. We now know the volume of this ball. And so now we should be able to plug it into the density formula and calculate the, uh, the density of this ball. So we'll go ahead and do that over here to get the density of this ball. We're gonna take the mass, 50.862 grams. And we're gonna divide this by, we're gonna divide this by the volume of the ball, which is 6.5. 6.5 it looks like I forgot my unit here this should be milliliters but since this is a solid object we'll actually just call it centimeters cubed we put this in our calculator now and if we're using the correct number of sig figs we should end up with 7.8 grams per centimeters cubed all right so we need to use two sig figs from an earlier video we learned about significant vid uh, significant figures and so there's our answer so the density is 7.8 grams per cubic centimeter we can go down to this table now and take a look and which uh, which metal does this uh, does this appear to be well it looks like since right here we have a density of 7.87 and we're really close to that that this little ball here is going to be iron so we just learned how to calculate the density of an object using water displacement and from that we were actually able to determine what the unknown metal is by turning to a a chart or a table of different metal densities. All right, so what about if we have a, 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 a regular shaped object like a cube or, uh, or something of that nature? Well, let's figure out how we can work problems out with that. All right, so here we go. We have this, this, uh, this little cubic box or this little uh, rectangular box here. And this is, uh, this is actually a metal. So we have some sort of metal here that's in the shape of a rectangular box. And what we, want, what we want to figure out is the density of this. And we also want to figure out what substance this is. So what we have to do is figure out the density. We have to figure out the density by taking the mass and dividing by its volume. So what we've done is we've taken this bar here. We've put it on this scale. And its mass, it tells us, is 485.352 grams. But now, how do I get the volume? How do I get the volume of this, this unknown metal here? Well, what I'm going to have to do is measure it using some sort of meter stick. All right. So if we measure this here, uh, it looks like I've already measured it out for us. We have uh, the measurements of length, width, and height. And so we're going to multiply these guys together to get the 
volume of a rectangular box, it's length times width times height. And when we put this in our calculator, we'll end up with 43 cubic centimeters. So we now know the mass. We now know the volume. It's simple now. In order to figure out the density of this unknown metal here, we'll take the mass, 485.352 grams, and we're going to go ahead and divide that by 43 cubic centimeters. And when we put this in our calculator, we'll end up with 11.3, that should be cubed, 11.3 grams per centimeter cubed. All right, if we're using the correct number of sig figs, this should just be 11 grams per cubic centimeter. And if we compare this to our table here, we've determined the density is 11.3 or 11 grams per cubic centimeter. Go to this table here and we can see that the density uh, of lead is about 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter. All right, so that's how we determine the density, I'm sorry, the density of, of regular shaped objects like cubes and spheres and rectangular uh, boxes, etc., etc. So now let's take a look at a few uh, word problems here. So here are the formulas, density equals mass over volume, and we can manipulate these variables to get mass equals density times volume or volume equals mass over density. And if you can't remember all of those formulas, you can go ahead and use this right here. Memorize this and, and this should work. Density is mass over volume. Volume is mass over density. And mass is density times volume. So let's apply these three formulas to, to three different word problems relating to density. All right, it says calculate the density of an object that has a mass of 250.23 grams and its volume is 50.0 milliliters. Will it sink or float in water? So we're asked to calculate the density of this object here. In order to get the density, we have to take the mass and divide it by its volume. So if we take a look here, this right here is going to be its mass because we have a unit of measurement of grams. And this right here is going to be its volume because we have milliliters. So the mass is 250. 0.23 grams and the volume here is going to be 50.0 liters. Put this in our calculator and we end up with 5.00. Sorry, this should be milliliters. 5.00 grams per milliliter. Okay. So that is the density of this object, if we use the correct number of significant figures. Let's take a look at another example. All right, in this example here, it says the density of copper is 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter. If there is 200 cubic centimeters of it, then what will its mass be? So in this problem, we're asked to calculate the mass. Mass, if you go back two slides, I'm sorry, if you go back just a few minutes, you'll see that mass is going to be equal to density times volume. So the density of this object, if we take a look right here, it tells us the density is this right here, 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter. And the volume is 200 centimeters cubed. Put this in our calculator and we end up with we end up with 1,792, 1,792. This unit will cancel with this unit, leaving us with grams. Now, this final answer here, it does not contain the correct number of sig figs. This here only has one significant figure. This has three. So if you're uh, asked to use the correct number of sig figs, this here is going to round up to 2,000 grams. All right, so this technically should be our correct answer using the correct number of sig figs. However, in a general chemistry class, I'm pretty sure that this answer will work for you as well. All right, let's take a look at one more example. All right, in this example, it says an unknown metal has a density of this right here and a mass of this right here. We want to determine the metals. This should be an apostrophe. Volume. So we're asked to calculate volume. And we know that volume is going to be equal to mass over density. And if we take a look, the mass of the object, it says right here, is 96.45 grams. And the density of this object is going to be, it says right here, 5.6 grams per cubic centimeter. 
So we're asked to determine the volume, so we take these uh, 96.45 and divide it by 5.6, and we end up with an answer of 17.223. Let's see what cancels out. Grams is going to cancel out, leaving you with cubic centimeters. So there is the volume of this object, but we have to pay attention to significant figures. This here is four sig figs. This here is two. So our answer here is going to have to be rounded to two sig figs. And if we round this to two sig figs, this two is not going to round this up to an eight. We should just end up with 17 cubic centimeters. So if you're asked to use the correct number of sig figs, this will be your final answer. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure that this might work for you too, provided that your instructor isn't you having you use the correct or the rules of significant figures. All right, so that is density in a nutshell. There are some example problems. That's how you determine the density using water displacement. That's how you calculate density of regular objects. And if you like what you see, people, go ahead and click that little bomb in the right-hand corner. That will subscribe you automatically to my channel so that way you can stay tuned uh, on a regular basis and uh, stay up on some chemistry. So I hope this was helpful.